All right, I am here with David Azizi from the Law Offices of David Azizi, and in a prior video, we had discussed negligent security guards and negligent security officers or any type of negligent security, and part of the discussion was aggressive or forceful security guards when it comes to any type of injury. So, David, when it comes to establishing negligence, how does that process work? So, what I do it is I call it as unreasonable excessive force and usually the type of cases I've come across and I can give you some examples I had one client of mine who was at a nightclub with his girlfriend they had a you know you get uh, you go to a nightclub you get uh, it's been a while since I've been to nightclub my first uh, bottle service that's what it's called so you get bottle service, he got it there, he was with his girlfriend, and then what ends up happening is there's a fight that occurs n next to him and his girlfriend, and all of a sudden he gets pushed and knocked down on a glass table, and the glass table shatters, and he's in the process of trying to get up just from this whole process. The security comes over and just grabs him, puts him in a headlock, and he puts up his hands right away and says, look, I haven't done anything. I, you got the wrong guy. I just got pushed. It's just, and, you know, the security guard being excessive and unreasonable without investigating properly as to what happened just starts dragging him out of there. And so this poor guy, he's concerned about his girlfriend. He's like, what's going to happen to her? There's a whole fight going on over there. Here's the security guard dragging him. And at first he's like, look, I didn't do anything with his hands up. Please, please, I got my girlfriend. I just want... And, it, and this guy's just pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. And, and he said it got to a point where the guy just opened up a side door and there were stairs. And uh, he just literally just like threw the guy down the stairs like a rag doll. And the guy ends up, you know, hitting the concrete uh, floor and just severely injuring his knee. He required several surgeries and things of that nature and, and I took on that case and I took the deposition of the security guards and obviously they were denying the fact that uh, this happened but the fact of the matter was my client went there no problem nothing whatsoever uh, there was a video that showed that my client wasn't doing anything and that the security guard comes picks him up and used excessive force causing severe knee injury to him that's an example of an excessive force where a security guard is using unreasonable force to do his work. The argument is even if this security guard finds out that there's a fight, comes out to the scene and under mistaken belief thinks that this guy is involved, it's still considered excessive for force on his part, in my opinion, to grab this guy and throw him out in the manner that he did. My client wasn't fighting him. He had his hands up. He kept telling him I wasn't it. He opens the door and just throws him down. That's what I consider excessive force. There's other examples. I've had another client of mine who went to um, Whole Food, and here in California, Whole Food has an outside section in which they have flowers and other stuff. She picks up some items inside, decides that she wants to go back to the front of the store to pick up some flowers and turn around, go back in to go to the cashier. Well, security guard is under the impression that she's trying to steal the products that she just put in her basket and went outside. So he goes up to her, and that's the other thing is security guards generally have to be identified, or at least if they are undercover, if they do stop somebody, it is required for them to show and say, look, I'm a security guard so that the person doesn't just think like this is some weirdo or some like random person trying to stop them. So this particular security guard, without identifying himself, goes up to my client, grabs her and says, here you go, you're coming with me. Uh, and she's like, who are you? Obviously, she's trying to move away from him. And the next thing you know, he kicks her foot, slams her against the ground, puts her hat, hand behind her back, handcuffs her and drags her back into the inside. That, again, is, in my opinion, considered excessive force. In my opinion, I believe that a jury out there would also consider those excessive force by a security guard as well. Uh, so that's the nature of what's considered excessive force. Some of the examples that I just gave are the more extreme, but I have seen other scenarios, which we can get into later, where they have been excessive force, but not to this nature. Absolutely, and if you have any questions as it relates to negligent security or lack of security at a retail establishment or any type of establishment, please feel free to contact the law offices of David Azizi. 
The phone number will be both above in the YouTube video and below in the info. Thank you for your time, David. All right, thank you.